One of the most common forms of technical analysis is the use of trend lines. But are you drawing them correctly? If not, I'm going to show you how. Now, as we all know, there's a vast array of different forms of technical analysis that we can use when we're analyzing the markets when making our trading decisions. But by far, the most common form widely used is that of support and resistance that we've discussed in our previous video and today's topic, which is trend lines. Everywhere you look, it's all about trend lines. You hear it on all our financial news channels, on the analytical reports that we read on a daily basis. We're often hearing about trend line support, broken the trend line um, resistance and so forth. So I th certainly think it's important that you educate yourself on uh, the subject of trend lines so you know exactly what it is that they are talking about. But before we get into the nuts and bolts, I want to define what a trend line is. Now, a trend line is a line drawn between two levels on a chart that have acted at some point in the past um, as support or resistance, turning points. Now, the more times price respects a particular trend line, the more significant that trend line becomes. And as price does test and challenge these trend lines, that becomes our decision type. Will it hold and bounce off or will it break out? Of course, that's the million dollar question, of course. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a few minutes, the whole topic just on its own. But what I found over the years of trading and certainly teaching is that there's a lot of confusion on exactly how and where to draw the trend lines in the first place. Indeed, this is not an exact science. There are two schools of thought here. Now, do you draw the trend line from the highs and the lows of a particular candle, or do you take them from the closing price? Now, personally, I like to take them from the closing price, but there's no hard and fast rule. There's no right answer. You can either do one or the other, but that's the point. You've got to be consistent in your approach. Now, there's no good in taking a trend line from the high of one candle to the closing price of another candle just to draw the trend line to fit into what really isn't there. It's more than likely it's going to pull out some inaccurate uh, trading signals. So what is important is that whether you take it from the highs and the lows or from the closing price, you've got to be consistent in your approach. Now, we're going to get onto the charts and I'll show you exactly how I draw my trend lines. And then more importantly, or as importantly, I'll show you how I use them as well in my trading. Come on, here we go. OK, so the first thing we need to be aware of and when we're plotting trend lines is the direction of the trend. And the clearest way to identify the direction of the trend is by using your eyes. So where price has been to where it is going. You see here in this example, price is down here. We're making a series of higher lows. This is an uptrending market. So we're going to be placing a trend line below where the price is. In an uptrending market, the trend line will be low, therefore acting as support. If the market is trending down, then we'll have the trend line placed above where the market price is, therefore acting as resistance on the way down. So as I've said, there's basically two schools of thought in determining where to place your trend lines. Now, the first school of thought is that you can place them on the extreme points, the highs and the lows of a particular candle determined by the wicks. So in this case, you could plot a trend line going something like that. So you're looking at this wick here. The only problem when doing that is that you often find that the price is quite a way away from where that particular trend line is drawn. That's going to be the same if you're plotting a downtrending market. If you're taking the wicks, we'll take this wick from here to that wick there, and that would be your descending trend line. Now, the approach that I like to take is to use the closing price. And the best way to do that is by using the line graph. So here is the line graph. Now I'm going to use the same chart. I'm going to plot my, my trend lines in using the swing lows and the swing highs on the line chart. And what you'll see here 
is that price is going to be trading much, much closer to where the uh, um, trend line is. So now going back to the candlestick, you'll see that the orange line that's using the line graph shows you price action much, much closer to the trend line. Now, as far as I can see, there's two main advantages by using the closing price or the line graph approach in drawing your trend lines. First of all, if you're looking to trade the breakout trade, that's basically meaning a break of the trend line to go in the opposite direction. Using the line graph approach will get you into the breakout much, much sooner because the price is much more attuned to that trend line. You'll see here on the orange line here, that was the line graph approach. You get into that breakout to the downside much quicker than if you were to use the blue trend line approach, which is on the wicks. Second thing is, if you're using the trend lines for dynamic support and resistance levels, then the price is much, much more attuned to that trend line, giving you many more opportunities for a bounce off that trend line for the trend to continue in the direction of that as opposed to using the wick approach or the, uh, the, uh, the extreme approach where price is often far away from where that trend line is. And as with support and resistance, trend lines can also be either major or minor. Now the major trend lines are gonna be found on the higher time frame charts. So for example here, we've got the pound against the Japanese yen on the daily chart. You can clearly see here that this is an uptrend. So we can pop in a trend line showing us uh, this trend to the upside. If you extend this out to where it's been as well, you can see that that's been respected there in the past. This is a major trend line. So this may act as support if it does indeed get down there in the sessions ahead. Now, with inside um, a major trends, you can have minor trends. So for example, here we've got a minor downtrend going on in the major uptrend. So you can have minor trends inside major trends, it's worth noting which environment you are in, either a major trend or a minor trend. Another way that some traders look at the uh, um, trend lines is to draw channels. So they'll have an upper trend line and a lower trend line to form a channel to give an indication of potential price reversals from above and below support and resistance in a trending market. So that is a trend line channel. Okay, so whether you're a trend line trader, whether you love it or whether you don't have much time for it, whatever camp you're in, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Give me a thumbs up if you did, give me a thumbs down if you didn't, and of course leave a comment below. I always read them and try to get back to as many as I can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and make sure you follow us on Instagram so that you can keep abreast of what's going on behind the scenes here at forexsignals.com. Until the next video, happy trading and goodbye.